Hi, my name is Ofir Gorodetsky. I'm a postdoc at the Mass Institute. I work in number theory, uh, specifically analytic number theory. This means I try to prove statistical properties of integers. So let's take the prime numbers, for instance. Euclid proved that there are infinitely many of those. And numerically, this seems quite evident, but in mathematics, we are never certain without a proof. And specifically, Euclid's proof is considered one of the most beautiful yet accessible proofs in math. Now, many years later, in the late 18th century, Gauss counted primes by hand and noticed a striking pattern, uh, namely that a number up to x is prime with probability basically 1 over log x. However, it took a considerable amount of time for the relevant machinery to address this problem to be developed, and even more time for the machinery to produce a proof of Gauss's observation. So this is one example of how patterns emerge when looking at primes and other arithmetic objects on a large scale. We cannot see this pattern just by looking at a single number. And these patterns are usually very difficult to establish. And there are many open problems in this area, either motivated by numerical evidence or sometimes by probabilistic models. My current project involves studying not primes, but other sequences of interest, including square free numbers, and numbers that are sums of two squares, and establish certain patterns for those. Patterns whose proof might be out of reach uh, for primes, but more accessible for these less sparse sequences. I particularly enjoy working on problems that are motivated by data and numerics, uh, as well as problems where I don't even know what the answer should be, or where I expect the answer to connect with other parts of mathematics, for instance, with mathematical physics. So, hi, my name is Christina Angel, and I'm a postdoc at the Mathematical Institute. My research is in quantum topology between representation theory and low dimensional topology. Knot theory studies loops in three dimensional space by associating invariants. And these are often polynomials, but the categorification procedure aims to obtain finer information given by groups. And the world of quantum invariants started with the Jones polynomial, and the Rashtik and Drive algebraic machinery which produces invariants from quantum groups. In this fashion, we get a sequence of Colo Jones polynomials. And there are conditions from physics saying that these invariants encode topological informations of not complement. And I'm working on a research program aiming to construct geometrical categorifications of quantum invariants. The first part was to develop a new geometrical framework and see Colo Jones polynomials from Lagrangian intersections in configuration spaces. And this is a starting point for obtaining deeper information given by categorifications using tools from symplectic geometry. Hello, uh, my name is Patrick Huff. I'm a PhD student here in the Department of Mathematics and my area of research is cryptography. People may have heard of cryptography in the context of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or popular new technologies like blockchain. However, cryptography has been around much longer than those relatively new areas. In fact, cryptography simply refers to the ways in which we protect and secure our digital communications. So that can mean anything from secure messaging apps like WhatsApp to online banking. Um, and indeed, every time we access the internet, our device is performing some kind of cryptographic protocol. Now, the cryptography we use today is secure because anyone wishing to break it must be able to solve a handful of very difficult problems in mathematics. So we build the security of our cryptography upon the hardness of a few well-chosen math problems. These problems are too difficult even for the world's most powerful supercomputers. However, there is a threat on the horizon, which is the potential arrival of quantum computers. It's been known for 30 years now how, in theory, a quantum computer could be used to solve all of these hard math problems that underpin the security of our communications. Some people even predict that quantum computers will be built within the next five years. The reason that this is a problem now and not one for the future is that someone could choose to record our encrypted communications today, and then when they have a quantum computer in the future, use it to reveal those earlier messages they recorded. It's therefore the job of mathematicians like myself to find new math problems that, a, that even a quantum computer can't solve and design cryptographic schemes to replace the ones we currently use 
in order to preserve the security of our communications in the future. Hi everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Valentina Semenova, and I'm doing a PhD here at the Mathematics Institute at Oxford under Don Farmer and Xiao Endong. I came to love mathematics from a pretty young age because I found that one could study very different problems and understand them in a systematic way and gain completely new insights using the tools that are available in math. And Within my undergraduate studies, I came to realize that social networks and network science specifically was of real interest to me, especially now when social media has such a profound impact in, on our lives from political phenomena to marketing to many other areas where social media now has a profound presence. And early within my PhD, this actually led me to study investor communities on the internet and specifically perhaps now the infamous Wall Street Bets Forum, which I started to look into at the start of 2020. And my co-author Julian and myself started to observe how contagion developed within these investor communities and specifically how social media facilitated people to come together and buy into the hype of a specific stock and a specific asset and also how people's opinions on these stocks also spread on social media. So how people were able to convince each other that a stock was going to gain prominence and be a really good buy or something that's worth shorting and selling. Us observing uh, these social contagion phenomena was very, very interesting, especially coming into the recent GameStop um, phenomena and GameStop short squeeze, as we really found that our research was not only contained to our findings, but also was something of increased interest from the broader media and both the Financial Times and various other uh, news outlets were coming to us and asking us uh, what was happening, what was going to happen next with this um, fairly new trend in the social sciences and social investor communities. My name is Lukas Brandner and I'm a pure mathematician working in homotopy theory and derived algebraic geometry. The aim of these two subjects is to use the tools of topology, which is the study of shapes, to prove results in algebraic geometry, which is the study of polynomial equations and vice versa. Now, both geometry and topology can be developed in two very different regimes can either work in characteristic zero, so for example, of the rational, real, or complex numbers, or we can work in characteristic P, so for example, over the numbers from one up to P with clock arithmetic. The second regime is often much more subtle, and generalizing results from characteristic zero to characteristic P is a really fascinating challenge. My own recent work is concerned with generalizations of classical Lie algebras, and in this case study, I will outline how these new objects can be used to transport results from characteristic zero to characteristic P in three different contexts, namely in the context of Galois theory, deformation theory, and the theory of configuration spaces. <laughs> 